China's real estate giant Evergrande Group has filed for bankruptcy protection in the United States. Now, the company has sought protection under Chapter 15 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code, which you would know is a measure that protects a non-U.S. company undergoing restructuring or from protecting its creditors that hope to either sue them or tie up assets in the United States. But before I talk to you more about this particular case, let's just give you an overview of how China's economy currently looks like. If you look at China's economic woes, that's only increasing by the day. It's actually slipped in deflation. Consumer prices have declined in July for the first time in more than two years. The official consumer price index, a measure which is basically seen to measure inflation, fell by 0.3% last month from a year earlier. New bank loans fell to about a 14-year low in July. Home prices also fell in July for the first time this year. Now let's go back to this case of Evergrande. In 2021, Evergrande was struggling with more than $300 billion in liberties. It had then first defaulted on its bonds, fanning fears of a contagion. It led to a strong default for the builders with major developers falling to complete housing projects, triggering protests and even mortgage boycotts from home buyers. But the worry today is that this meltdown is making investors worried across the country. Let's talk to you about some other numbers and give you another example. Let's talk about Country Garden. That is one of the largest non-state-owned developers by sales. It's the largest exposure to lower-tier cities. China's largest property developer before this year and has already warned of a multi-billion dollar loss and missed bond payments. The company's stock is down by over 70% this year. Sales are down about 56 billion and 7 billion dollar loss. That is between Jan to June 2023. It's already warned that it could consider adopting various debt management measures, maybe preparing to restructure its debt as it struggled to raise cash. Now let's go back to the other picture in terms of why are we seeing more and more developers in China under debt stress. Around 48% of the sector's borrowing is at the risk of default. Reports are also suggesting that China's real estate developers had debt worth 12% of the nation's gross domestic product at the risk of default. Let's take a look at some numbers by Bloomberg. The economic estimates a massive burden that could curb growth the world's largest second largest economy for years to come. An analysis of China's 186 listed developers show that about 48% of total borrowing is held by companies that either already defaulted on public bonds or possibly are at that risk. Since the sector's debt crisis unfolded in mid-2021, companies accounting for 40% of Chinese home sales have defaulted. Most of them are private property developers. Also, what is worrying is that there is very little liquidity that's left in both the equity as well as debt markets as investors and creditors are wanting to avoid the sector. With home sales already very weak, the debt crisis could further delay the prospect of a recovery of both the property market and the broader Chinese economy in which real estate is a core pillar. Just look at some of the other rankings. S&P Global Rating said that this week it could adjust its forecast for property sales to a descending staircase figure from an L-shaped recovery. So we'll really have to wait and watch how this really unfolds for China going forward.